Ever get tired of typing out long PowerShell commands with a bunch of parameters? Let's talk about how hash tables and splatting can clean that up and make your scripts way easier to manage. Hey everyone, I'm Travis and welcome back to Seraltos. Over the past few years, I've shared a bunch of PowerShell scripts on this channel. And if you've watched those, you've probably seen me use something called splatting to pass parameters into commands. Today, we're diving into how that works using hash tables to simplify PowerShell commands, and we'll walk through a real-world example of splatting to create an Azure VM. But before we jump in, a quick reminder, if you find this helpful, hit that like button, subscribe, and share it with a friend who's into Azure and automation. Also, check out my courses on Udemy, including the beginner-friendly guide to the AZ900. Links are below. And a huge thank you to all my channel members. Your support means a lot. All right, let's get started. So here's the deal. Some PowerShell commands can get really long. It's easy to mess something up or just get overwhelmed with all the parameters, especially when automating tasks or updating large scripts. That's where splatting comes in. Instead of cramming all the parameters into one long command, you can just build a hash table, just a simple collection of key value pairs, and then pass that into the command. It's cleaner, easier to read, and way more flexible when you need to update or troubleshoot a script. It's a small change, but it makes a huge difference. Let's jump into PowerShell and see how it works. Here we are in VS Code, my preferred PowerShell editor. Before we dive into splatting, let's review hash tables. A hash table lets us store key value pairs. We can create a hash table by declaring a variable, followed by the equal sign, then the at symbol. Then we'll put the key value pairs between two braces or squiggly brackets. Let's create a hash table with a variable of car. Then we'll add our key value pairs. That's the hash table. We have the key followed by the value. The keys include make, model, year, and color, and then a value for each. Let's select and run that to create the variable. And now if we want to see the color of the car, we can call the variable followed by a dot and then the color key. We'll run that. That returns the value or the color in this case. And stick with me on this. We'll get to splatting in a minute and this will all come together. We can call the variable and pass it into the format table command to view all of the keys and values. That shows the name and the values. We can also get the properties by calling the variable and piping that into the get member command. That shows the type as system.collections.hashtable or just a hash table. We can also see the methods available. So we could add to the hash table with the add method. We'll run that. Now, if we view all of the key value pairs again with format table, we now have the new key and value for price. Okay, so that's a brief introduction to hash tables. There is more to it, but that's enough for what we're talking about in this video. Next, let's identify the problem that splatting will solve. Let's say we need to add a new Azure VM. We can do that with PowerShell, the command is on the screen. And of course, you'll need to be logged into Azure with rights to create a VM to follow along. We'll start by setting the local admin credentials. We'll use them for the new VM. That just adds the credentials to a variable. Next, we have the one line command to add the Azure VM. We need some information to build that VM. We need the resource group name, the name of the VM, the location, the virtual network and subnet. We need the network security group name, the public IP address name, if we have a public IP address, any open ports, we need the image information. That's the image we'll use to build the VM. We need the VM size and then the credentials. These are all the values we're gonna supply. Next, we can select the line and run it to build the VM. That kicks off the build process. I'll pause the video here and come back once it's finished. Okay, that finished and so far that's pretty easy and it works fine. But what if we need to create a few VMs, each with different names, images, or size? We'd have to scroll through all this text to find the values and update them. Or what if we had to add a new parameter, like adding it to an availability zone? That could get messy and kind of error prone. But there is an easier way with splatting. With splatting, instead of using a single line command, we create a hash table of keys and values. The key is the parameters, and we add the value to that parameter. Here we have all of the parameters that we used for the last command added to a hash table. This is much simpler to understand and update. For example, if we wanna change the name, we can easily see the name parameter and update it. 
and we could add a new parameter to specify an availability zone, for example. Once we've updated that information, we can select and run it to create the variable. Now, all we have to do is run the new azvm command, passing in the hash table of the parameters. There's one important difference. We call the hash table with the at sign instead of the dollar sign. This tells PowerShell that we're passing in a collection of values, not a single value. It's basically letting PowerShell know we're splatting. We'll run that command, and that starts the build process. We'll pause here again until it's finished. All right, that finished. We can view the new VM with the get azvm command, passing in the resource group and the VM name. And of course, we can use splatting for that as well. That gets the values of the new VM. That is an overview of hash tables and how we use them to simplify PowerShell commands with splatting. I hope that clears things up and gives you a better idea of how to use hash tables and splatting to simplify your PowerShell script. If you like this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.